Hello guys and welcome to Survival Russia and uh, welcome to another Russian gear day. We're gonna take a look at the Plush Palatka today. I have had a lot of questions about Plush Palatka over the years. I never actually made a video on the Plush Palatka so uh, so that is what I'm gonna make up for today. This is the camouflaged model from uh, the early to mid 90s but to fastly run over the dimensions and all this Plush Palatka is uh, 180 by 180 centimeters that means basically six foot by six foot it weighs about a kilo and that again transforms into about two pounds 2.2 pounds so uh, they're definitely not light this is the general size of them <laughs> these are super super cool items it's one of my prized items they are dirt cheap here in russia and they are super sturdy they are as sturdy as they're cheap i think i pay less than 10 bucks for them Depending, this is a little bit more expensive because this is sort of collectible already. But yeah, it's made of a heavy-duty canvas. It's uh, impregnated and uh, also when it gets wet, the fibers will swell up. So it will get uh, stiff, much like the Vesmashok, the Russian clothes bag that I have a video on. You can see up here, when that got wet, it could just stand by itself actually. And uh, even this is uh, nice and soft and fluffy. It will get extremely stiff when it gets wet. And uh, thus the impregnation and uh, the heavy duty canvas fabric here will repel water. So a little bit of history on the Plas Palatkas. They were first seen in use in the, during the Russian Tsar period. And uh, it was in uh, 1791 that the first variant of these actually came into use. Then later on they were modified in 1894. And finally in 1936 they came up with this finalized product and it have actually not uh, really uh, changed ever since. The only change that they made to it was that in uh, 1942 they started to make them in camouflage and uh, that actually makes a little bit of sense because uh, the Germans were also doing that and generally in the old days there in the 30s and 40s the, the uniforms that were issued they were not camouflaged whatsoever they were just like oh, field gray or some funky khaki sand color and that was basically it so they were issued in the camouflage patterns also to uh, give the soldiers a little bit extra ability to to conceal themselves before i'm going to show you how to transform this uh, piece of canvas into a poncho and how to make the standard shelter i'll tell, tell a little bit about the uses because this is super hyper extremely multifunctional and the Russian army have been using these for all sorts of things because they have used them for so long that they have of course came up with a lot of uh, interesting uh, uses for these. These have been used for one-man shelters of course you can button them together to make so to make a big tents and you can make even huge uh, command post structures of, uh, of this. It's all, they have also been used for covering uh, trenches and so on and sniper shelters and general uh, camouflage and concealment for for single persons or single soldiers but one interesting thing they also used it for they actually use these or use these for making a raft a floating device to cross rivers and so on with that is actually really cool i i just stumbled upon that in the instructions and uh, i think i'll save that for a video let's take a look on how you actually transform this thingy here into a poncho. We have a little funky toggle here in the middle. I will take a corner and push the toggle through there and close the corner like that. That's the first step. So you can see you have a string here or cordage here and there's another cordage here. This part here is what goes around the shoulders and the other part is what forms the hood. And this is made in a very clever way is when you pull them you will actually shrink this piece. Put this thingy here around your shoulders and start to pull. You can make a little initial knot here. You can see you again. We have a little funky plastic toggle. They can also be made of wood. But you pop that through and basically it's hanging. Tighten this a little more. Then we throw this part here over the head. And then it's done. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course not, because we take this corner here and flap it into the hood. And we have these here for the hood. And then you can say 
you're basically done. Then it's just a little bit of a question of the of a fine fitting on how you really want it. You see this has a slit here, looks like a pocket, but it's not. Pop the toggle open here. That is so you can actually stick your arm out and you'll actually be able to to hold the firearm. You can of course stick your arms out also, but if it's buttoned, then it's not really that useful. But it's a pretty neat feature. But for my own uses, I can say, I mean, I use it for everything. Of course, shelters and shelter for fire, but in the winter I also used it as a ground pad for the dog, sometimes a ground pad for myself. I use it in the car to shade the windows with or for covering my luggage. And uh, I mean, it, it has so many uses because you don't, there's no need to take any care about it because it costs like eight, nine bucks or something. You know, not this one, but the, the green ones, the uh, khaki ones they're, they're very cheap and then they are so sturdy so you can actually just do what you want with them and uh, you just get a new one Paspalatkas are issued with a piece of string and a few tent plugs in a small bag and that's for making a shelter from the one-man shelter and uh, let's go and take a look at that because I have made a one-man shelter right over here so this is from the manuals described one-man shelter it is so easy to put up and you can put it up in like two minutes Maximum. Just some tent plugs in the corners and a stick on 65 centimeters. I'm not just a little bit around two feet, I think. Yeah, it's of course small and uh, not very roomy and so on, but but uh, if that's what you have, that's what you have. And uh, it's definitely nicer than sitting out in the rain. You see, I can cuddle up pretty nicely in here. I'll not be able to stretch out in full length or anything like that, but uh, who cares if it's raining cats and dogs or something like this. I can even have my equipment and so on. Yeah, but it is what it is and uh, better than nothing. So yeah, I hope you like the video on the Plus Palatka and uh, the uses. I think I will do some videos on the more interesting uses of the Plus Palatka. I would appreciate if you check the links in the description and uh, like and share, especially share because then more people can have a benefit of this channel here. And uh, subscribe of course and as always, until next time, get out and train and get it done and see you next time here in Russia.